I don't know about everyone else, but every now and again, I like to step away from the games that we know are going to be really good, and instead try going for one that's a bit more... weird. Over the years, I have played a lot of weird games, and I figured for my first episode of talking about weird games, we could take a look at one of gaming's longest-running developers, Konami. Konami is a legendary company responsible for bringing us such classics as Contra, Castlevania, Metal Gear Solid, Sweet Coden, uh, Frogger. People remember Frogger, right? But they do have some weird games in their archive, too, and we got three to talk about today. The first one is a Famicom game titled, uh, got it written down here, Bio Miracle Bokute Upa. Upa. Upa! Now, I'm not sure I completely understand the story to this one, so work with me on this. One day, this thing comes and steals a baby. Then, a slightly bigger baby inflates a pig. Then, the title screen loops. Oh, I hope you didn't miss that, because that's all the story this game has. Let's just select the normal difficulty and stop all this talk of babies and whatnot. And, of course, I am playing as that baby. I don't think this was a good idea. So, yeah, this is actually a game where you play as a baby. Certainly never played one like that before, so hey, points for originality. I approve. <laughs> now, at face value, this is a pretty standard platformer, but in reality, that's exactly what it is. You play as the baby, who's actually named Upa, so now at least one-fourth of the game's title makes sense. And, being a baby, your main form of attack is whacking things with a rattler, much like babies normally do. To which then the enemies inflate and fly away? And, and then they burst, and then die. What? Oh hey, look, a power-up box! Let's see what's inside. Whoa! <laughs> look at him go! Look at him go! Baby's all grown up now! Watch out, world! Here comes Oopa! Ah, uh, that was fun, Al. There's a boss fight at the end of some of these stages, too, but is it just me, or is that just Birdo's head? It's just... There you go, there's the boss. Flawless. After defeating Birdo's decapitated head, it's time for stage two, which throws you into a cake and you have to eat your way through to the end. Yes, baby! Eat! Consume! Become a champion! And you can tell he loves it, too, because even when he's out of the cake, he's still chomping away. The stage doesn't even end with the boss. There are a few different bosses in the game, but for more than half of the levels, you just fight Birdo's decapitated head, just with a different stage layout. I mean, the mustachioed walrus is pretty snazzy, but other than that, it's pretty lazy. Hmm, yes, quite. There honestly isn't that much more to say about this game. It's really just the concept that's weird more so than the execution. It's just kind of a fun adventure. There's a few decent water levels, riding on the balloon enemies makes for somewhat interesting platforming, there's a vegetable level to offset the sugary level, which is sweet, <laughs> but overall it's nothing too special. You know, aside from the whole baby on the killing spree power-up. And also, the final boss is a goat. I, I really don't think anybody knows why this goat has it out for a baby, I just felt like mentioning it. But once you take out Goat McEvil, it's time to open up the final chest. Should have something pretty great in there. Let's see! Baby Explosion! Nice! Mice! Opa! Next up is a game that I remember having some fond memories for, and that is Dewey's Adventure for the Wii. You see the box art here is a circle, except it's off-center. And we wonder why Konami's in the state they're in right now. The game begins with a bit of story. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Why does mom always have to bug me about studying? I gotta go lie down. The young boy ends up meeting this girl who offers to tell him a story. And despite the fact that's incredibly creepy, we're told a story of a tree of seven colors that created all living things. But one day, black water started to flow and corrupt the area. Which is bad. So the tree gave life to a drop of water named Dewey to save the day. A, a drop- a drop of water? That- that's the protagonist. And you thought the baby was weird. Room, room! If the black water keeps polluting our land, the tree of seven colors will wither, and we'll all... Uh, we'll all what? I, I mean, you're just gonna leave me hanging here? I'm trying to help you guys. Oh, jeez! So this is yet another platformer, except the main way to control is by tilting these sideways Wii remote to tilt the world around Dewey. It's as somewhat annoying as it sounds, but the main gimmick to the game is controlling the weather. Since Dewey is a drop of water, you can make the world cold and turn into a drop of ice for better combat, or make the world hot and turn into a steam cloud to stun enemies instead. And that's pretty cool. Or warm. It depends, really. 
The main goal of the game is to destroy all of the black water monsters that stand in your way, and in the process, free up as many captured water drops as possible. More like H2, oh, you're dead, son! <laughs> and honestly, the game is pretty enjoyable. Combat as Ice Dewey is fun, finding some of the more hidden droplet friends is kinda satisfying, and each of the eight worlds are varied enough to keep things interesting throughout. Offering a few new gimmicks with each one, like in this stage, the heat makes these statues' tongues expand and you can use them as platforms. Huh. Oh yes, I forgot, of course. Water's one true weakness. Water. Brilliant! The boss fights are pretty good too. They each have at least one unique way to make you change the temperature to attack. And I really like this boss in particular because you have to get Dewey to absorb a big drop of water and he gets all plump in the process. Cute? Yeah! Video games! And it's really no surprise, but the game is pretty easy. But I guess in a game where you play as this thing, I really shouldn't be expecting Dark Souls here. But hot damn if I wouldn't pledge to that Kickstarter! After all of your trials and tribulations, it's time to take out the evil Don Hedron. Aw oh, man, I died. Oh, oh no. Dewey's... Dewey's dead. But wait! His friends are here to bring Dewey back to life! By... singing? And truly, the weirdest part about the entire game? There's product placement for Aquapod water bottles. And last, but certainly not least, kind of the main reason I'm doing this video in the first place, welcome to Parodius. One of Konami's bigger franchises is Gradius, a horizontal space shooter that spanned multiple consoles and is just a lot of fun. So, as a tongue-in-cheek joke to themselves, they created a parody series called Parodius. Do you get it? Because it's a parody of Gradius. Parodius! It's so clever! And, just like Gradius, this series has spanned many games across multiple consoles as well. But today we're going to look at the Super Famicom port of the arcade game, Gokujo Parodius. Which the full Japanese title roughly translates to, uh, Fantastic Parodius. Pursue the glory of the past. I love Japanese 90s game titles. Upon starting the game, you're greeted to a character select of all things. You got Vic Viper from Gradius, good ol' Oopa shows up once again, Mystical Ninja Goemon, a stick figure, I don't know what that's all about, and, uh, uh, My Michael, Michael the Pig? Have you ever experienced a moment in a game where you just knew it was gonna be fantastic? This is it, this one sprite right here. I'm playing as him and you can't stop me! If you never played a game like this before, it's a pretty standard shooter, except you grab items that move the power-up box at the bottom of the screen, and when it's on something that you want, you select it and add it to your ship. And you got all the classics. There's Wave, Grade Up, Oh! You know the usual stuff. The first level is a carnival. We have to shoot through crane machines holding up objects that you need to avoid, as well as the game-wide common enemies of penguins and chickens. I... I... why not? And in typical arcade shooter fashion, if you survive long enough, it's time for the boss. After taking out the tutu wearing panda bear with a duck on his head, it's time for level 2, which is more water based with enemy fish and a giant cat boat. Oh and cool, I got the power up that lets me attack by shouting! My, my favorite! Then you fight the huge mermaid who also fights by shouting, and it's off to the cake level. I'm not really sure what it is about Konami and destroying cakes from the inside out, but I don't like it. Lips. The next stage is all about following the warnings of a winding path and avoiding the baby chicks that are... racing you, I guess? Go down a 50 degree angle. Go up a 100 degree angle. Don't make any U-turns, which is odd because you can only move right anyway. And, uh, I'm not really sure- oh, falling rocks. Oh, okay, makes sense. Uh, what? Deer? Oh, a falling deer, too, okay. Oh man, something even crazier is about to happen, I can't imagine... what? Ah, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> After that magical moment where I then questioned all of my life decisions, anything else that I ran into in the game just seemed pretty normal to me now. A girl in a kimono shooting bunny silhouettes that's actually just two penguins in a boombox? <laughs> I can believe that, sure. Legs. 
After some more time of shooting whatever the game developers came up with, it's time for the final boss that's an octopus. For some reason. And once you defeat it, we're treated to a cutscene with Michael opening up a chest holding a bomb that then explodes, which causes him to now float in the void of space. Must have gotten the bad ending or something, I don't friggin' know. And I gotta say, the music for this game is surprisingly fantastic. It's a soundtrack filled with wacky remixes of classical music that doesn't even try sticking to its own theme. Let's get ready to rumble! Honestly, at the end of the day, it's games like Parodius that make me love weird games in the first place. Sure, Bio Miracle, Bokute Upa, and Dewey's Adventure are enjoyable, but they're more so weird than they are good. Parodius, on the other hand, is outright fantastic from start to finish. Really now, look at this guy. Never before have I loved a pig. On May 14th, 2015, after Hideo Kojima has left and Silent Hills was cancelled, Konami's CEO has stated that mobile is where the future of gaming lies. Which really roughly translates to we forgot how to make good games. So it's very possible that in the near future we'll soon see Konami ride off into the sunset. Like a regular sunset rider. Another Konami classic. Wait, didn't Konami buy and then dissolve Hudson Soft? Screw Konami! Hey everyone, did you like the video? Well, hit the little like button down there because that would be super duper awesome of you. And if you're new, be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with new videos. You can follow me on your favorite social network by clicking the links down below. And I want to give major thanks to my premium Patreon supporters, Alex Downs, Kodiak Polzer, Gustavo Hernandez, Cohen Van Beck, and Mustard Pig. Have a feeling that's probably not your real name. I also want to say that I played a little bit of Bio Miracle on my Let's Play channel, so be sure to go there if you want to see some more gameplay. With all that said, I'm out of here. Bye bye